Hello and welcome to Objective-C Programming. This is lecture number five. In this lecture, we're going to see a few things about Cocoa that makes it so easy to use and so useful. One of those things we already touched in the last lecture, and that thing is an outlet or outlets. And uh, we already kind of know what it is because it's an obvious uh, thing, but we're going to, to see it deeply in this one. We're also going to get to know what targets and actions are, although just like in the previous lecture, we did touch this thing and we did use it. And one of the most important parts of this lecture is delegates. And this is not only a thing to use, it's also a concept to understand. And in the last lecture, when we were overviewing the uh, design patterns that we use today and design patterns that are really useful in modern Objective-C programming, one of those things was delegating actions. And we're going to see this in much more detail and example and in this lecture. So here is the new thing about the course now. Uh, since this is more of an experimental course and we're trying new things, we're trying to make this as useful for you and as easy as possible, uh, we decided to split every lecture into modules. And this is just what it says. It's just splitting one long video into few shorter videos. And each video will be called a module, and each module will be about a specific part of the lecture. This is done so that you can go ahead and look and uh, watch the uh, lectures in more personalized way, because let's say you understood one part really well and didn't understand the other part really well, unlike your partner. And instead of uh, rewinding and looking for uh, uh, the part you didn't understand, you now have those modules and you know exactly what mo each module is about. And you can make it more personalized, more useful. So you only watch whatever you, you need to watch. So this is the first module. In this module, we're going to just recap and uh, remember what we were working in the last lecture. We created a simple application, a window application that has uh, two buttons and we were generating the random number and seeding the random generator with the current time. We had a way of connecting those buttons uh, from the interface to the code and if you don't remember that, just go ahead and watch lecture four but that was easy, you, you probably remember, because we were connecting dots, we were uh, making lines between a button and the code. So we made two things. First connection was we made sort of a pointer to the object in the interface. We had a label, and that label was there to represent, to show the random number we generated. And that label needed to be referenced from the code somehow. So we created a thing called outlet. Outlet is a way of referencing to the thing in our interface. We also made another type of connection. We had a button. We actually had two buttons. And we wanted to do something in the code when a user presses the button, when the user clicks the button. So we made sort of an inverse of an outlet, but not really, just a different thing. And we called it an action or IB action, and IB stands for, for interface builder. So we created methods, just like any other method in our code, but we said that method will be in an IB action. And our compiler understood this as, okay, this method will be executed when something in the interface happens, when some event from the interface happens. And then we connected the lines and we said, well, this button should run this 
method. And we were able to do that because that method was marked as an IB action. So first things first, this is what we did. We had a button, we had a button. Uh, we actually had another outlet for the button because you remember we wanted to make the generate button disabled by default. So when you run the application, it's disabled. You cannot generate numbers. And we enable it by pressing seed. Seed will seed the random generator with the current time and make the generate button enabled. So because we wanted to do something to the button, so because we wanted to act from the code to the view, to the button, we needed to create an outlet for that button. And we said IB outlet, NS button, gen button. And we created this new uh, variable that is going to be referencing our button. For seed, we didn't need to do that because we don't change this button from the code. We only react to the button in the code. So when we click seed, we do something in the code, but we don't touch the button itself. This, that's why we only have an IB action for the seed. We don't have an outlet. And we have an outlet for uh, the label. So what is an outlet? You probably understood the, understood the idea, but the formal definition is an outlet is some instance variable that identifies an object. And we usually mean by outlet and by object, some object that we see or have somehow in the interface builder, in our graphical interface. Not all the objects in the interface are visible. So not all the objects are like buttons or labels. Some of them represent something like media player. And it's not the player with the buttons that you touch. It's just a thing that will play your files. But it's still an object. And it's still, if you want to reference it, needs to be connected to an outlet. So the idea is there. You have a view and you connect it to the model. You connect it to your code by having an outlet. And you actually do it visually. You can do it visually, but you can also do it programmatically. When you have, let's say, a button, and you want to do something in the code when something in the interface happens, in this example, when button is clicked, then we get to the notion of a target and an action. And it's super simple. If you have a button, then you have some method in some object that reacts to this button. We had the C uh, method in our object. So this object is the target. This is what gets to run the action. And the action is the method, the selector we are asking the target to run. So if we have a button, then the seed in this example is the name of the method we're running and this is the action the seed is the action and the target of that action is or we can say the target of that button is the the object that we wrote so this is just a notion this is a more of a notation and when we say what is the target for this button then we mean what is the object that has the method that reacts to some action on this button. And what is the action? Well, this is whatever we decided to run when we click the button. OK, uh, to better understand how this whole thing works, we should take a look at uh, how we get to the NS button. And you know that we only work with those objects that are uh, ultimately inherited from NS object. And I say ultimately because it's not like NS button inherited directly from NS object. NS button inherits from NS control, another subclass of NS object. But again, it's not a direct subclass. The NS control is a generic control. And all those things that we have on the screen, like buttons, text fields, sliders, uh, anything that you can basically call a controller on the view is uh, 
inherited from NS control. And that NS control is inherited from NS view. And NS view is another generic object, generic class that represents something that appears in our window. And that could be anything visually on our window. And the window itself and NS view inherited from NS responder. And NS responder is a generic class that represents and has all those methods that can handle different events. And that ultimately, for the last, inherit from NS object. And NS object is super generic object that only has those things uh, that are about having memory, initializing the object, and stuff like that. All right, so this is the recap. This is module one. See you in module two.